Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the part four of the Slither.io tutorial series in Scratch. In this episode, we are going to be adding our food sprite. So let's see what we have so far. If I click the green flag here, you can see we have a snake that moves around. It has brightness and it pulses and you can go faster by clicking down. It has a camera X and camera Y smooth effect that we added in the last episode. So the first thing I want to do really quickly is hide a bunch of these variables because they are taking up a bunch of our screen space, which we don't like. So let's hide all of them except for a length because that seems to be somewhat important to the user. Um, and as you can see, there's this weird decimal thing going on here where it's kind of jittery, but we will uh, fix that in a future episode. Okay, so in order to create our food sprite, let's come here, press paint, and let's upload the costume. So for this one, it is called colored food. And if we pull it into scratch, you can see it is just a circle with a gradient effect that I've created. So the next thing we want to do is go into our code and let's add uh, some scripts here so that we, it actually works. Uh, so obviously these are gonna be clones, right? Because we wanna create multiple food uh, for the snake to eat. So we can drag in a when flag is clicked. Let's repeat 50 times and let's just create a clone of myself. So then we're gonna say when I start as clone, let's create these two variables. Make sure you hit forward the sprite only, that's super important. We're gonna call this clone X, and this is gonna hold the food position, uh, the food X position, and then clone Y, and also make sure you hit this for the sprite only. So we're gonna say set food position, which is clone X, uh, to a random number between, uh, let's do negative 720, and 720, and we will set clone Y to a random number from negative 540 to positive 540. Um, and then what we can do is drag in a looks, let's hide here, and let's show our clones. So you can see that we some of these will uh, be spawned, but obviously uh, they aren't going to their locations because we have to actually make their position go to these variables. So what we're going to do is say when flag is clicked and we're going to drag in a forever as you may guess. Drag in this uh, motion go to x y and then we're going to find the position relative to our cam x and cam y that we created before. And there's a pretty easy way to do that. Uh, you can drag in the cam X for the second position here and the cam Y for the second position for the Y. And then as you may guess, we're going to put clone X in the first position and clone Y. So make sure you have that uh, ordered correctly. The next thing we wanna do is, let's test this out really quickly. So you can see that they're spawning. And if I go to these locations, uh, let's see. So actually this is the uh, when flag is click. We should actually change this to when this sprite uh, is spawned. So when I start at this clone. Now as you see we have all these different dots but as you can see uh, when the dot or when the food is outside of our current uh, field of view they get attached to the border. So there's a pretty easy hack that we can use to fix this. We can go into looks, drag in a set size to 400 and then after just set the size to 100 and that actually fixes it. Um, you can see that we can only see the ones that are near us. Now, uh, if you take a look, they spawn pretty harshly, as you can see, and we kind of want it to uh, fade in so it's a nicer experience for the user. So what we're going to do is, uh, let's drag in a, first of all, let's drag in a set color too. Um, and the reason is because we want different colored foods. So let's drag in a pick random. Uh, we can do like some, just something random, negative 400 to 400. Um, and then set ghost effect to, and this is where we're gonna uh, make it a nice spawning animation. So we're gonna set this ghost effect to 100, and then we're going to show, and then we're gonna slowly make it fade in. So we're gonna drag in a repeat 10 times, then you can go into looks, drag in a change ghost effect by pick random number, and we're gonna do a random number from something like, let's do negative six, and negative 14. Uh, and as you can see, when these spawn, it's a nicer animation. And we also have these different colors. 
the next thing I want to do is handle the collision between our snake and the food, right? So you should be able to eat it and gain some length on your snake. So it's actually pretty easy to uh, pretty easy way to do that. Um, you can go into events, drag in an if statement, and say if touching sprite one, which we know is our snake, then we can just repeat three times and do a little animation here. And the animation is, whoops, three. It's going to be change size by negative 20. And as you can see, it kind of shrinks, but it still exists. And that's uh, really a problem that we need to fix. So the way we do that is by deleting the clone after. So now, if you take a look, the uh, food disappear. But we also want the snake to grow when he uh, eats the food. So the way to do this is to drag in a change length by one after the repeat. So if we touch the snake, let's do an animation to show that the food has been eaten. Let's change length by one to grow the snake and then let's delete this food. So as you can see, we have a fully functioning food system that we're gonna make some uh, advancements and, and some uh, more code to in the next episode. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you very shortly with a part five.